We had respondents from every one of the 50 states in the United States, um, and only registrants could vote. They were the only people, as all of you have on your badges, you have little codes and you have instructions on how to do it. And boy, how has it changed from going from doing it by paper and putting in ballot boxes to now where everybody can do it on their iPads and their iPhones and at, at the kiosks throughout. So it makes it easier. I'd like to thank my partner, David Lee, and James Lee, and Travis Tunis, who've been here for the last three days making sure this operated well and we got the results counted right. I get to come in at the end and just do the glory job of presenting the results to everybody. But without further ado, let's look at some of the results from the CPAC straw poll. So, uh, the type of registrant, 48% were individual registrants, 42% were students, very similar to what we see in past years. 5% with a, associated, a participating organization and 4% with a participating organization. Age, CPAC continues to be dominated. continues to be dominated by young people, as almost one in two of the participants in the straw poll was between the ages of 18 and 25. However, we had a third of them that were between the ages of 26 and 55, and 20% that were over the age of 55. So slightly up from past years with some of the more mature members of the CPAC audience. In terms of gender, we had 63% were male, 37% were female, very, very much in line with what we've seen in past years. In terms of what drives people who attend CPAC, now let's understand, the CPAC straw poll is not a quantitative survey in the real sense of what you may read about in newspapers. This is a sampling of people from all 50 states who are at the forefront, at the forefront of the conservative movement. They're the people who go knock on doors. You're the people that make the phone calls. You're the people that go stand in shopping centers and hand out brochures and literature for candidates and causes. So this is representative of what you, the front line, think. Not every conservative, but the activists, the ones that are at the front line. And here you see that more, in three, more than three in four of you say that the most important, your ideology is driven by individual freedom and reducing the size and scope of government and its intrusion into individual citizens' lives. And by the way, that number has been consistent now for the past several years. When we look at one of our favorite people in Washington, only kidding, um, you can see we did a little time chart here and went back and looked at how President Obama had fared with CPAC respondents in the past. And as you can see, back in 2012, there were actually 19% of the people that said they approved of the job he was doing. Well, today, in 2014, it is virtually unanimous that everyone disapproves of the job he is doing. Although, although I do have a question. Do we allow the media to vote because 2% said that they approve of the job he's doing? No, not the Washington Times. I wasn't talking about you, Larry. Um, but more troubling for our friends down on Capitol Hill is look at the ratings the Republicans in Congress get. In 2012, it was basically split. In 2013, by a 10-point margin, you all said that you supported what they were doing, that you approved the job. This year, they are what we say in the business underwater. 51%, a majority disapproved the job the Republicans in Congress are doing. That's a number they need to pay attention to. Um, how do you think we should fix the budget deficit? Shock and surprise. 78% said cut spending. Oh. oh, oh, the slide didn't go? Oh, sorry, I went backwards, sorry. Sorry, I pressed the wrong button. 78% um, said cut spending. 16% said raise taxes and cut spending, and 1%, it's that media vote again, that said we should raise taxes only. What do you, what do you all think, <laughs> yes, cut. What do you all, uh, we asked you, what did you think the role of the United States should be in the world today? And 52% of you, a majority said that it's time for our allies to stand up, provide for their own defenses, and not rely on the United States. Uh, 
I'm sure this one will be an even bigger favorite. Our friends over at the NSA, if the Republicans on Capitol Hill need to get a message, the people at the NSA need to read this one real closely. 78% disapprove of the NSA monitoring phone calls and scanning emails in the, in the excuse of fighting global terrorism. This next slide, I think, is going to be a little bit of a surprise to everybody and an evolution. We asked the question about your view on marijuana, whether it should be legalized for recreational purposes, legalized to use for medical marijuana. I'm going to, sli I'm going to switch it. I'm going to switch it. I'm building to it. Give me a chance. I'm going to show a little leg here. Or whether we should keep it illegal or, you know, keep it illegal, just illegal. And as you can see, a plurality said that we should legalize it for recreational and medical use. 21% said it should be for medical use, and 31% said it should be illegal. Now, I know you're going to say, I know you're going to say that we had almost half of the people who were young that did that. But I will tell you, I looked at the numbers by the different age groups. And with the exception of the participants who were over the age of 65, every age group had a combination, a majority in combination of legalized, either for recreational or medicinal purposes combined that gave it a majority. So it wasn't just the youngsters. And the numbers you have all been waiting for with bated breath, the one that every year gets the biggest howl out of the audience is, who won the CPAC straw poll for the presidential preference? And as you can see, for the second year in a row, Kentucky Senator Rand Paul won with 31%. Texas Senator Ted Cruz came in second with 11. Ben Carson came in third at nine. Governor Christie came in at eight. Governor Walker came in at seven. Uh, Senator Santorum, former Senator Santorum at seven, and Florida Senator Marco Rubio at six. There were 25 people on the list. Not everybody scored more than a percent, so a lot of them in the other, and we had a whole slew of write-ins, but none of those write-ins, and they ranged everywhere from Jeb Bush to, believe it or not, Calvin Coolidge is making a comeback. <laughs> uh, but. Not all of them scored beyond 1%, so we clumped them all together. But again, thank you, thank you for participating. Look forward to next year for an even greater response next year. Thank you, Tony.